we're going to talk about functions. So these are similar to actions, except a function delegate returns something. So instead of hello world, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a function delegate. So I'm going to say uh, this is this is how we declare a function. And that function is going to return something back. So I'm going to return back a string. And I'm going to use a lambda function for that. So we talked about lambda functions in the past there. So I'm going to call this one hello world. And I'm going to say that this is going to be a function that takes in nothing, uh, but it returns hello world. So this is my lambda function. It takes in no parameters and it returns hello world. Now we're all moving, it seems, uh, to function program, functional programming. So you really should start uh, getting into to this. I mean, what you can do is you can you can implicitly put in return in there, but uh, only if you you wrap. I think if you wrap it around, um, oops, you need to put in a semicolon as well. So you need to add all this um, ceremony to it. So rather than adding all that ceremony, what you can do is just put in hello world, and then that returns there. So now instead of calling our message here with hello world, we can actually pass in a function. Now, hello world, um, uh, hello world is going to call this and then return the string. Okay, so hello world is a function that returns a string. And again, I'm going to move this to be true so we can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to pass that in and it's going to say hello world. And just to prove that we're, we're not cheating here, we're going to say uh, uh, hello night, as, as you might say in, I don't know, parts of England. So there you go. Uh, hello night. Um, so that's that there. So that's that's uh, functions that take in uh, nothing, but return um, other values. Okay, uh, but return a value. Now there's the alternate one, which is uh, let's say we want to take in the value, manipulate it, and then return something back from it. So instead of this, uh, I'm going to say that this takes in a string, and it returns a string as well. So it takes in a string and it returns a string. And all this is going to do is it's going to make it uppercase. So I'm going to take in a formal parameter, which is type string. So the first parameter is s. So it's type string. And I'm going to just return s to upper. Okay. And then instead of hello world here, I now need to probably call this something else, but I'll just change the, the text that I, I pass in here because now hello world needs to take in a string. So I'm going to type in um, did you see the game last night, uh, which is a quote from the IT crowd. Uh, and now you see did you see the game last night is in uppercase. Okay. But what if we want to do something else? What if we want to add another parameter? Well, uh, it turns out that we can actually add as many parameters as we want, because if I go to F12 here, you see that this definition says, this takes in this type T and it returns this result. So you see that it takes in something of type T, which is a string in this case, and it returns something back, which is a string in this case. And it's a delegate. So all of these have been defined someplace else. We don't need to worry about them. But let's say we want to, what if we wanted to write this phrase 10 times? Well, what we might want to do is we might want to specify uh, an integer. Now, an integer uh, represents the 32 bit uh, sign structure. But you'll see that now when we go to F12, it says it's T1, T2, and it outputs the result and it takes these formal parameters. So the first parameter is a string, the second parameter is an integer. And if I go to here, you'll see that this is defined as func string int 
string. And uh, you see here the formal parameters now say string and integer, and that's what it's complaining about. It says there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter arg2 of, and then it gives you the function. So now I'm going to repeat this phrase over and over again. And for that, I actually need to, to do some, some like proper uh, coding here. So um, I am going to say that this needs to take in a um, uh, count. I'm going to call this count. I can call it whatever I want. These are my parameters. And then I'm going to say um, uh, string temp equals that. And then for int i equals zero, i less than count i plus plus temp plus equals s dot to upper because we'll still do the two upper thing plus new line and then we'll do return temp. And there is our function. Now again, this is great because you can have uh, functions that are, you know, that are in line here and you don't need to worry about them and then you can pass them off and, and then you know uh, uh, to other um, parts of your code and then they don't need to care about it and we'll, we'll show I'll show you that in um, in the second part of this function video because um, we're going to use functions to, to create to spawn an object basically so did you see that game last night and I need to specify the number of, of times I do this, so I'm going to say five, and now uh, everything's all hunky dory and uh, this is all accepted and everything's good. So when I press F5 now, uh, you'll see that we get Did you see the game last night repeated five times, um, and uh, we've created this this delegate function here that does the, the job of the code in here. And the other thing is that we don't need to go and try and find this function someplace. So what you might have done in the past is you might have actually had this function someplace else in your code and you've only ever used it once. You only use it once in this function and you never call it from anywhere else. Well, why not just put it inside the function that you use it? And then that way you've got your code uh, at hand. And I'm sure there'll be discussions below in the video about how this is terrible and it's the downfall of society and all that kind of stuff. But trust me, it, it makes so much more sense when you see code that you're going to be using here uh, that's not going to be you know polluting the, the rest of your your, cl your class, uh, much like the sort of delegates, um, which are, are handy and, and we do need them, obviously, because these are just fancy delegates. Um, but uh, it saves you from, from creating... Um, having to create your own delegates. So uh, anyway, that's the, the functions uh, video for uh, today. Thank you for watching. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is part of the Video A Day in September 2017 videos. Uh, if you liked it or you didn't like it, hit the appropriate button below. Uh, subscribe, so if you hit the, the little icon over there, then you'll get notified uh, especially when you hit the little alarm icon, that's the really important part, apparently. Uh, then you'll get notified when a new video goes up. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.